December 29th, 11.54am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 5. S Sweetie, you have to believe me, I didn't go anywhere near that crime scene. So then, where were you when the murder took place? We talked about it yesterday, remember? I was in the Ringmaster's room. And while you were there, it was the Ringmaster who left the room, right? Exactly! He told me to wait in the room because he would be re be right back. That's when the Ringmaster entered the scene of the crime, right? That's what it seems like. But the Ringmaster must have been wearing Max's costume, right? Oh, sweetie, I just remembered. Went straight to the ringmaster's room, still dressed in my stage clothes. But when I got there, I went ahead and took the costume off. Which means he was topless? <laughs> Which means? It means that the ringmaster could have taken his costume and went out looking like Max. Fabulous! That's a fabulously possible possibility! <laughs> well done, Nick! Why is the second hair capitalized? Maya. Maya, you know how to capitalize words properly. What are you doing? <laughs> However, sweetie, why would the ringmaster want to dress up like me? Isn't that a bit strange? Hmm. If you think about it, all I found at the crime scene was my silk hat. What about my cloak? Where did that go? Double hmm. Wow, Max, I never thought of that. You should be a detective or something. Well, I was never quite sure what to be when I grew up. Magician or president. You have no idea how hard it was to make a decision. I'm glad he wasn't a president. Ugh. That's really cool. Fabulous. This mystery just keeps getting deeper. December 29th, 12.06pm. District Court. Courtroom number two. Now that everyone is back, let's get started. The court is now back in session. Ms. Von Karma, please proceed with the prosecution's case. Very well. I will now call my next witness. A pitiful clown bid the unfortunate distinction of having seen the entire thing. Will Mr. Lawrence Curls please take the stand? Why did she just call him a pitiful clown? There he is. The witness will state his name and occupation for the court record. West Clan Philip Clanadelphia, born and raised. Oh my god. Yeah, he does the Fresh Prince intro, but with clowns, it's ridiculous. And it's too fast for me because the game doesn't let me read it out before it switches back. <sighs> Name and occupation. Will the witness please inform the court why he is speaking autobiographical gibberish? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just not used to being in court. I've never been in a courtroom in my life. I wasn't quite sure what joke is best suited to this sort of occasion. What in the world are you talking about? You're in a grand hall of justice, not some comedy club. Since it's easy to see your occupation, please state your name for the court. Oh yeah, maybe this joke is okay. Mom, do I have to wear pants? The sign only says no shirt, no shoes, no service. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good joke. I mean, it doesn't really fit into the fact that we're in a courtroom at all, but whatever. Okay, okay, how about this? Have you met my proctologist, Dr. Seymour Butts? How is that one? <laughs> Seymour Butts is a surprise dog from Futurama. That's a sad one. But a couple of clowns were up to no good, started making trouble in the... Your name. Lawrence Curls, professional funny man, also known as Mo the Clown. You witnessed the scene at around 10.15pm, the day of the murder. Correct? Yes, yes it is. Very well, Mr. Carls, will you please testify to what you saw that evening? 
rabbi, a priest, and a Rastafarian walk into this plaza without the humor, please. Thank God, that joke didn't sound good. Like I said plaza instead of bar when it's obviously it walked into a bar joke because you can't have alcohol in a, in this game. <laughs> okay. Oh, poor Mo can't be his normal stoogy self in court. What you witnessed. I know, I know. I'm not the greatest comedian in the world. I haven't been able to make people laugh for ten years. No matter what I say, all I get in return is a vacant stare and polite applause. Since no one ever laughs at my jokes, I've taken to laughing them at them myself. It's a bad habit, but hey, at least I'm trying. I've made my predicament. I'm a clown who can't make people laugh. I'm almost useless. But I keep trying. I even try to come up with jokes just for today. But this atmosphere is very nerve-wracking. Racking has a W in it. I decided to try making everyone laugh. Seriously, everyone, what do you think of me? How am I doing? Yes, that was his testimony. <laughs> um, aren't we the ones supposed to be asking the questions here? Witness. Huh? Vivil, listen to your call for help after the court proceedings are over. Zas, please stick to the facts of this case. Really? You'll really hear me out? Well, I'll make sure that one of my staff will be your straight man later. Thank you, thank you, I can't wait. Poor Gumshoe. It's Gumshoe, yeah. Now that's all, that's settled, shall we begin once again with the testimony? Of course we can, I'll talk for as long as you want. What you witnessed, for real this time. <laughs> The night of the murder, after practice was over, I went straight back to my room. You have no idea how tired I was that night, I was pooped. I thought I'd go straight to sleep, but before I did, I glanced out the window. That's when I saw two silhouettes, they were a bit far away though. It was the ringmaster, and he was with Max, who was wearing his cloak. I kept watching them, and all of a sudden, Max clonked the ringmaster over the head. Clonk. That's very interesting. If this eyewitness account is to be believed, I have enough to pass judgement right now. Of course you can, as there is no way that this account can be criticised. However, the witness is a bit, how do you say, off kilter? Almost like he has some sort of atmosphere of guilt surrounding him. Ah ah ah! It must be because of my insincere smile. Mr. Wright, please begin the defence's cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, you've got to find some kind of contradiction in his testimony. I know that. Mr. Wright. Your Honor, I'm afraid that if you push this witness too far, it would bring disaster upon the court. Thus, I sincerely hope you are not going to engage in pointless saber rattling. I understand, Your Honor. If you cause this clown to stray from the facts, I'll hold you responsible. Why am I responsible? I'm not the one with the corny jokes. Okay, I believe that means we have to be careful where we press. Um, I believe we will get penalised if we press the wrong spot. You'd say you clearly saw this, even though you were, by your own admission, far away? That's right, I had been thinking about it over and over since that night, but things didn't really make sense until I spoke with the prosecutor, Ms. Von Karma. But now I am 100% certain that it was Max and the Ringmaster that I saw last night. Just think about it, how could I be wrong if Max is always wearing his uppity symbols? Uppity symbols? <laughs> Lawyers nowadays, do you even have to go, go, go to school anymore to be one? <laughs> Alright, everyone knows what to do, all together now, say it with Uncle Mo! Oh, No one said it. That's so sad. See what I mean? It's always like this. The crowd never wants to go along with me. I must really be utterly and completely worthless as a clown. Yowza! Enough foolishness. Get back on track. Will the witness please testify as to what he saw and only what he saw? You say you saw the ringmaster get clonked over the head? Yes, I did. It's the climax of my story. 
He really does enjoy the completely random non secateur. What would you say the victim was struck with? You mean the weapon? I have no idea. A weapon wasn't found at the murder scene, right? That's not what I meant. You did say you did see everything, didn't you? Well, I, um, yeah, I suppose I did. Wait, no, I didn't. I didn't see a weapon. <laughs> Mo, did you or did you not see the crime of murder committed that night? I will not permit you to harass my witness in this manner. You better have an excellent reason for attacking this poor, poor clown. Because if you don't, you know what is waiting for you. A nice penalty. Ooh. Isn't this a bit melodramatic? So what will it be then, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Do you have any clear basis to believe that my witness did not see the crime? Of course I have grounds to make this claim. Then let's hear it. That's something I can't share with you at this time. What? What? Did I, did I do the wrong thing? What did you just say? Mr. Wright, I know there's something wrong with this testimony, but I can't put why I feel this way into words of the judge. Maybe we should get a bit more information. Once we find something more solid, we can give it another shot. Yeah, you're right. Do I, just, do I get a five-point penalty? What the heck? Oh my god. <laughs> Mr. Wright, before you resume testimony, you know you must be penalized. Yikes, that's harsh. You know, most testimony and what he told us yesterday are kind of different. Yeah, I noticed. We just gotta pinpoint what's changed. You can do it, Nick. Wow. Wow, that's awful. Uh... You just happened to glance out of the window? You could say that. You could also say I peeked, stared, glimpsed, peeked, eyeballed. Mr. Carls. Oh, I guess synonyms aren't allowed either. What should I do? I wonder if I should press him further on this issue. Yeah. Yeah, I've forgotten how to play this case properly because it's really, really long and not interesting. <sighs> exactly why did you look out of your window that night? Why? Why? Clowns ain't a reason to look out their windows, do they? That's not what I meant. I meant that, well, when we spoke yesterday... Flashback. Once I tucked myself into bed, I heard this amazing noise. It was incredibly loud. It sounded like a giant thump. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You forgot? Your Honor, the witness looked out of his window upon hearing a loud sound. He did not just simply glance out of his window that night. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot to mention that thump, didn't I? Ow, ow, ow. That's not something you just forget to mention. Um, yeah, what she said. I believe it would be best if Mo were to revise his testimony. Hmm. Very well. Mr. Curls, please revise your testimony. They should start turning the tables in our favour. What was the sound like? Well, I guess it sounded like... Hmm... I guess you could say... Mr. Carlos, may the court remind you that a humour is unnecessary. <laughs> oh, how'd you know I was gonna make a joke? <laughs> I guess that the sound sounded like a... I suppose it sounded like someone getting hit with something very hard? Yep, that's what it sounded like. Honestly. Someone getting hit, huh? But then, you went to look out the window and you saw... Okay, I think now if I go to the end, I can actually do the same thing I just did earlier and not get penalised, because I have some more evidence. <sighs> yeah, I'll just fast forward this, because you already saw it. I've got a great reason to make my claim. I suppose you will be telling us all that great reason? Of course I will. Will. The reason is, the witness's very own testimony. What is the meaning of that, Mr. Wright? 
Mark said that he heard a sound like a thump of someone getting hit. Hmm, he did say that. However, Moda stated the following under oath. I kept watching them and all of a sudden, Max clonked throwing Master over the head. If most people believe when he just looked out the window upon hearing a sound, there is no way that he could have seen Max clonk anyone. Clonk, clonk anyone. Clonk, clonk anyone. I don't know what the writing test is. 972, a crack fan using the prison boo boo <laughs> Mr. Curls, how do you respond to Mr. Wright's assessment? They didn't commit this clown point is getting into the clown car. Mr. Curls, are you reciting the C team theme to anger this court? <laughs> Yeah, that was the A-Team theme, but with clowns. There's like, a lot of weird references. No, no, I'm just stalling for time while I jog my memory. Great job, Nick! These types of witnesses always seem to have a selective memory. You just have to peel back the layers of the clown makeup to find the truth. Well, um... You're back from your jog? Well, it pretty much happened the way I said. Pretty much? When I looked out my window that night, the ringmaster was already face down in the snow. The prosecution helped me fill in the gaps in my statement. Von... Von Karma. Tampering with witnesses again. So now you're saying that you did not see the defendant clonk the ringmaster? Y yes When I looked out my window, the ringmaster had already checked out. Checked out? Yep. He was on permanent vacation, as they say. Ah ha, ah ha, ah ha, ah ha. Mr. Curls. Your Honor? You did not witness the actual crime. Have you still say you saw the criminal, correct? Y yes exexactly. Ringmaster was slumped over and I saw someone's silhouette next to him. Very well, then please testify to the silhouette you saw. I expect the truth. And if I even catch a hint of a joke from you, I will put you in a holding cell until you learn court etiquette. Got it? Got it. The silhouette it was a bit far away, but that chair could only belong to Max. There's no doubting it, especially since I saw his uppity symbols. His silk hat, that black cloak, they were all there. His face was silhouetted, but there was no doubt that it was him. His cloak was fluttering in the wind, so I couldn't really see what he was carrying. Hmm, it does seem as if the defendant was at the scene of the crime. It took the clown long enough to get his facts straight. But whatever, this should finally be good enough, yes? It's decisive testimony. Was Max really at the crime scene that night? He said he wasn't there. We have to believe in that. Alright, Mr. Wright, commence your cross-examination. Okay, so there's an obvious contradiction here, right? Because... Mo said he saw the uppity symbols. Oops. Accidentally pressed L. Don't you think you're going a little overboard with how explicit you're being? That shadow belonged to Max is an awfully firm statement, don't you think? What are you getting at? I'm just saying that one of your fellow performers' life is on the line here. Are you truly 100% absolutely certain that it was Max? I'm not the kind of person who would lie about something as serious as this. The silhouette I saw was Max, I'm convinced of that. Doesn't seem like he's jumping to any conclusions this time. Let's go over this again then. What makes you so sure that you saw Max that night? Okay, so here's the problem. Uppity symbols. There are three of them. Silk hat, cloak, white roses. But why didn't he see the white roses? What is happening? So what we have to do is get the poster here that has the three symbols on it. And point that out. <laughs> you say you saw all of Max's uppity symbols. I suppose so. That's Silk Hat in the cloak, right? No. Everyone knows that Maximilian Galactic has three uppity symbols. Three symbols? Yay, everyone get ready. All together now. Silk Hat, cloak, white roses. <laughs> What the? Who cares if he knew that they were free or not? He saw what he saw, and he saw the symbols. He just forgot to mention one. Isn't that right, Mo? 
you like pie? I love pie. Three point one five nine zero. Silence, fool. You ought to respond with the whole truth. No fractions. Pi isn't a fraction. Like, it's, it's no rational number. It can't be represented as a fraction. <laughs> well, it can be, but, you know, not, not like a rational fraction. You know, if the pi over 1 is a fraction that represents pi, but... <laughs> order, order. Mo, you didn't see the roses, did you? To be honest, there weren't any roses on the person I saw. I'm seeing was dark. It's obvious it was too dark to see that kind of detail. But the witness said he was able to see the silhouette of the criminal's face. Not to mention the roses are white. There's no way he could have missed them. Then the roses must have fallen off, then the defendant assaulted the victim. If that was the case, then the police would have found them near the crime scene. Mr. Wright, are these white roses truly material to the facts of this case? Clearly not, he's just toying with this court. I got her on the ropes now. These seemingly insignificant facts have never failed to lead me to the truth yet. Someone is toying with the court, but it's not me. Your Honor, do you recall Trillo's testimony? There's no way I can mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. How can you mistake someone with that crazy get up and his nose stuck up so high? How can you mistake someone wearing such a snobby three-piece get-up? Trillo saw them all. Trillo saw all three of Max's symbols. However, this witness claims there were no white roses on the person he saw. There is absolutely no doubt this is a contradiction. Hmm, now what am I supposed to think? One is supposed to disregard the pointless, but this... Judge, forget the roses, think about his other testimony. The witness has stated without a doubt that he saw Maximilian Galactica. Nothing else matters, let's wrap this case up now. Your Honor, it may be trivial, but it, if it does cast down the prosecution's case. Frankly, I have my doubts about this witness. It seems that, unlike wine, the witness has not grown more mature with age. I'm not... mature? A final conclusion. I'm 99% certain that this witness saw the defendant. However, my remaining 1% of doubt is quite reasonable. Which means that for my peace of mind, I'm going to request a bit more testimony. What? If there are no contradictions in his next statement, I'm prepared to issue a ruling. A ruling? Nick, this is your last chance! The Silhouette, Part 2. There's no doubt in my mind, there were no white roses that night. However, all the other symbols were there, I'm equally sure of that. Especially the silk hat, there is no way I could forget seeing the decorations on it. He was wearing it the entire time that he was on the scene. Okay, so there's a problem with that. <laughs> Mr. Wright, you've got one last chance at this. Just one chance? I will not allow even the slightest hint of badgering against this witness. If you are going to prove to me there's a contradiction with Mr. Curl's statement, You'd better have at least a shred of evidence to back up your accusations. I've only got a single shot at this. I've got to be careful. I understand, Your Honor. One chance is all I will need. Thankfully, it's really easy. So it's okay that we only get one chance. See, if we scroll to the end here, he says that the silk hat Max was wearing it the whole time he was on the scene. But the problem is the silk hat was found on the scene, which means it must have come off his head at some point while he was on the scene. And so he can't have been wearing it the entire time he was on the scene. It's an obvious contradiction. Objection! This wouldn't happen to be the silk hat you saw that night, would it? Yep, that's it. That's the hat he was wearing that night. No question in your mind. Exactly how one must take a thing like that. I see. Is there some sort of problem, Mr. Wright? Ms. Von Karma, where exactly was the silk hat found? Did you always ask these questions? It was found at the crime scene. The c c crime scene? Does that mean... The silk hat fell off at the crime scene. However, the witness clearly testified to the contrary. The witness stated that he was wearing it the entire time that he was on the scene. No, that's not true! <laughs> order, order, order! Mr. Carls! 
Y yes, Your Honor? What is the meaning of all of this? You are old enough to know better than to behave like this in court. Hey, that's just not right. That's so harsh. What's not right here is your eyesight and your memory, among other things. Wow, the judge is being a huge dick. God. Why are you being so mean to me? What did I do? Let me guess. You just didn't like my jokes or something, right? You didn't have to go and insult my eyesight or my memory. They're both great. Seriously, why? It's because you're sitting above me doesn't believe you belong there. And no matter how old I get, I'll always be younger than you. <laughs> Enough of these childish outbursts, Mr. Curls. Who do you think you are? I saw him, I swear I saw him. It was Max. Even if he didn't have his roses, he was still wearing his dumb silk hat. I'm telling the truth. He turned into a bratty little kid. It's pitiful, isn't it? He left the scene wearing that dumb silk hat. He was there. He... left the scene? What's the matter, Nick? There's something I've been mulling over for a while now. Mo? What do you want? You just said that he left the scene. Exactly how did the murderer leave the scene of the crime? What? He, um, he went... What do you mean, how did he leave the scene? You can't ask me that. Mr. Phoenix Wright is badgering the witness, Your Honor. This witness's testimony is so full of holes, Miss Von Karma's protest is useless. You've got a point. Let's hear what the witness has to say on this matter. Is that alright with you, little guy? Don't talk to me like I'm a little baby. Besides, what kind of stupid question is how do you leave the crime scene? The answer's obvious. He just turned around and walked away. That's what I expected you'd say. You sure that's how it happened? Say what? Huh? I'm not sure I know exactly where you're going with this. Lawyers nowadays sure do love to harp on the smallest things. Do you have any proof to counter his story as to how the criminal left the scene? Yes. Yes, we have this crime photo with no footprints. We, this came up, like, ages ago. Look at this picture. Photograph. It's a photograph. I, I can't make a nickel, nickelback joke if you say picture. God. <laughs> the problem is the footprints in the snow. Footprints? In this photo, we can clearly see the footprints of the victim. However, where are the criminal's footprints? They aren't there. Ay, 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 ay. So, Mo, exactly how did the criminal escape the scene? Um, he, uh... Your Honor, this witness has already proven that his testimony is completely unreliable. I move to strike all of this witness's testimony from the court record. I agree. This clown's testimony is as rickety as the clown car he came to court in. Wait just a second. You guys can't just ignore everything I've said. Fine, fine, I'll tell you the truth this time. You, wait a second. I think you've said more than enough for today. That didn't hurt. I'm sick and tired of listening to you anyways. I'll give you the real deal this time, I swear. I don't know why, but I get the feeling things are going to get worse before they get better. Mr. Lawrence Curls. Yes? The testimony you provide up until now has been false? It hasn't been false. I haven't lied. It's just... It's just what? It's just I was a bit confused on the bit about the criminal leaving the scene. Especially since Von Karma and her whip told me not to talk about what I really saw. <laughs> order! Order! I will have order! Franziska Von Karma, how could you? Your Honor. If you had heard the truth from this witness, you would have, would have had exactly the same opinion as I have. What opinion is that? It's not funny. That's enough out of you. I'm going to listen to what he has to say. Now then, let's hear the truth about what you, saw, you say you saw, Mr. Curls. Ha, huh, you're not going to believe this, but it's all true, I tell you. Try not to waste our time with your idiotic drivel. The truth. Now it's time for our next segment, Modos. Everything that I've said up until now has been the truth. 
When I looked out the window, the ring monster was down and Max was standing above him. He wasn't wearing his white roses, but he was wearing a silk hat. That's when I saw... He... <gasps> this is the truth now, get ready for it. He flew! He jumped up and flew through the air! He flew right off and disappeared into the darkness. That's why there were no footprints! Flying people don't leave footprints! I told you it wasn't funny. Do you believe me now? Well, that was, um... How do you put this into words? Maximilian Galactor is a world-class magician. But to leave the scene of a crime by flying, there's no way that actually happened. You... you're right. Why is she right? You believe the other witnesses. Why wouldn't you believe me? Especially since, especially since it's the best part of the story. Hmm... To be honest, this is the first time I've heard of a flying criminal. What do you think about this witness's testimony, Mr. Wright? I happen to know that he's telling the truth, but it's more complicated than it sounds. I'm gonna say he's telling the truth and see what we get. What he just said was so strange, I don't think he would have made it up. Which means that he's telling the truth? That's what I think. Nick, wait! That means that Max actually used magic! Yikes, you're right. Ow! Only a foolish looking fool could be fooled by such a foolish fool's foolish dream. Don't be ridiculous. Magic does not exist. Didn't we spend the previous case talking about how spirit channeling does exist? I mean... What's the, what's the distinction exactly that makes magic not exist and spirit channeling yes exist? It, it seems like a form of magic to me. <laughs> I suppose I will let you all in in my thinking regarding this matter. The criminal disappeared into the sky. I'd love to believe that, but I just can't wrap my head around how that could actually happen. You imbecile. If you disregard need for proof, Miss Von Karma's case is sound. However, I've got the feeling that this case is in dire need of more investigation. Thus I will conclude the day's proceedings at this point. It's an undisputed fact that the criminal left no footprints at the scene. Tomorrow I want us to find out the reason behind this mystery of mysteries. Um, uh, uh. I believe that's enough for today. Court is adjourned. December 29, 2.33pm. District Court. Defendant Lobby, number 5. Hey sweeties, what in the world is going on? That's what I want to know. They say the criminal flew off into the air and disappeared. Max, I can't believe I'm asking this, but you didn't fly that night, did you? I know you didn't mean to ask me such a fabulously stupid question. I can't fly whenever I please, it's not that easy. But it looks so effortless for you on stage. It's not that simple, I'm actually flying on stage. I use invisible wires and have them hoist me through the air! Wow, you just told me the secret to your magic. No, I broke the first rule, the cardinal rule, the only rule! Sorry, Max. You made you break a magician's creed to never reveal the secret to their tricks. Nick, what do we do now? What we can do now is hope we find the flying criminal in court tomorrow. Great idea, let's do our best and catch this sucker. To be continued. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope this case is so tolerable. I mean, this part was okay because Regina's not in it, but uh, it's it's gonna bring back some of that other stuff that wasn't pleasant. But this part was alright, I think. Anyway, uh, next time, part three, investigation. Uh, I believe this case actually goes for three days, so there'll be a th another investigation segment after this one. It's a long case. Um, and that's one of the things that people don't like about it, since it's very long and not very good. But that's okay. Um, anyway, yeah, thanks for watching, hope you enjoy.